What if I told you déjà vu wasn't just a weird coincidence? It's the byproduct of something much larger, time manipulation experiments. Deep in secret labs, hidden from the public, shadow organizations are running trials that mess with the very nature of time itself. These aren't, these aren't your typical science projects. This is about bending timelines, creating alternate realities, and controlling time loops. Every time you experience déjà vu, it's because they've tweaked something in the timeline you're living in. Think about it. Those moments when you're, you're sure you've been somewhere or done something before when reality feels just a, just a little too familiar. It's a momentary overlap of multiple timelines in one version of events you've already lived through that moment and your brain is catching up to the echo from that alternate timeline. It's, it's not that you think it's happened before, it, it has. Somewhere in, in another version of reality, you're living that exact moment again. Deja vu is the crack in the code. A reminder that there are multiple paths your life could have taken, all happening simultaneously. They want to learn how to control time, how to rewrite events on a global scale. What the f There's a scene on a wall. It's called the Duty Hotep image. And it shows the Egyptians. It's all the city's dudes in profile. It's an Egyptian drawing. Definitely Dynastics made the drawing. And there's 156 dudes when you count them all up and they're pulling a statue that's tied to a wooden sled. Now, we know this statue, there's parts of it still exist. First, it's alabaster. It's not granite. Second, it weighs about 56 tons. That's fine. And you're dragging it on a wooden sled. You can't use that to explain how you move a thousand ton statue. It's not like a sliding scale of difficulty. There's a curve to it. I do grant them the ability to use primitive methods to move stuff up to like 100, 150 tons. But once you start getting to 400, 600, 1,000 tons, material failure, wood's not an issue, that literally sleds would just be crushed or driven into the ground. There's an absolute scale of difficulty that gets applied to these massive objects. They say like, oh, we know how they did it because they talk about it. Uh, had the opportunity over the years to interview, again, people who have worked at the test site at Groom Lake. Uh, one gentleman spent 12 of his 30 years in black programs at Groom Lake. When I asked him, I said, uh, first of all, I said, uh, do you believe in UFOs? And he looked at me with a straight face in one on one. He said, absolutely, positively, they do exist. I said, can you expand upon that? And he said, no, I can't. About a year later, we were talking about, again, activities at Groom Lake. And I asked him, I said, you know, can, can, can you really let me tell me what's happening out there? And he said, well, there's a lot of things that are going on there that I won't be able to tell you until, until the year 2025. But we have things in the Nevada desert that would make George Lucas envious. Now, I wonder why 2025. If that's true, is it because the Freedom of Information Act would then make it available to be shared publicly? Um, obviously, to an extent, they're never going to share everything. Or is it something a little more nerve-wracking? Uh, like, maybe we'll just see it by then and they won't have to explain anything to us because it'll just be out in the open uh, which is a more terrifying thought <laughs> if you ask me they hide the real answer to this question from us how is it possible that people who used horses and carriages built gigantic and intricate buildings like these were they supposedly only using hammers saws manuals and basic tools does that seem logical to you look at these grand structures and ask yourself how they could achieve all this with such primitive methods. It makes you question whether our historical timeline is accurate or completely fabricated to hide something. And it gets even more terrifying. What if the dates of these buildings are wrong? Imagine if that number one wasn't a one at all. Our history could be off by 1,000 years. This leads us to wonder, who could have built these intricate structures? Have you ever heard of Tartaria? Tartaria was a colossal empire that was conveniently left out of mainstream history. But real history can never be fully erased, as many references can be found in old maps and documents. Tartaria was a highly advanced civilization, with technology and knowledge far beyond what we can imagine. Did you know that Lucifer is not the only prince of hell? And the most shocking thing is that Lucifer is not the worst of them all. The Lesser Key of Solomon is a medieval grimoire on demonology that contains descriptions of the seven princes of hell. All of them are considered the rulers of hell and are the leaders of hundreds of legions of demons. Mammon is one of the seven princes of hell and is the personification of greed, wealth, abundance, and injustice. He is considered a fallen angel who represents the greedy pursuit of wealth and power. Mammon seduces people into committing immoral acts to obtain money. Mammon is also a term used to refer to money and material wealth. It is used in the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus says you cannot serve both God and Mammon at the same time. 
But what makes Mammon the worst of all is that his nature is more carnal, so he can take any form, and he enjoys roaming the earth in search of lost souls. If one day, a person or animal close to you starts acting strangely, you should be very careful. What if I told you there are cities on private islands stuck in other time periods, where the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s never ended? It all started decades ago as a social experiment funded by billionaires and governments to create isolated micro societies locked into specific time periods where citizens would be kept completely in the dark about any technological or cultural advancements beyond their assigned decade. There's an island where everything is still 1950s, Americana, the cars, the music, the fashion. Citizens there have never heard of the internet, space travel, is still a distant dream and television is a luxury with only a few channels just across the ocean you'd find another island locked in the psychedelic 60s in the midst of the hippie movement where everyone's wearing tie-dye shirts completely unaware that the world outside has moved on that would be insane maybe that's what's actually happening in antarctica <laughs> i mean if, if there's anything going on up there maybe it's like these kinds of tests these kinds of uh, experiments, right? But then again, you would think like if it was kind of like a Truman Show type thing, it would be a lot harder with an entire civilization to like keep them from like getting on a boat, like wanting to travel outside of that place, right? Like as humans, I mean, we're, we want to explore, we want to learn. So uh, it doesn't make much sense as far as like keeping that facade alive, right? If they were to see like an airplane fly overhead or something. And then again, like the 70s and 60s, like aren't that long ago. So like there are people that are still alive today that were like alive in that time, right? Like my dad was in the Navy in the, the 70s. Like he was a very aware of the world around him, right? So would they just be like birthing people now and kind of like raising them in that society? Would it be actors like initially to help kick off things? I don't, I don't think that's true. But uh, if it is... Um, that sucks. <laughs> what if I told you that um, shopping malls are actually part of a massive psychological manipulation experiment? Here's the theory. Every mall you've ever been to isn't just about retail therapy. They're designed to be you with labyrinths of mind control, specifically constructed to mess with your sense of time, direction, and decision making. Ever notice how, how you'll walk into a mall thinking you'll only stay for a little while and suddenly hours have passed? That's not by accident. The layout of these malls is, is carefully planned to create a sense of disorientation. There are no clocks, no windows, and even the air is subtly manipulated to, to keep you inside longer. The lighting, always perfectly tuned to make you feel awake and alert while the music is chosen to alter your mood and make you more likely to buy things. Beneath um, the most massive malls, there are rumors of hidden floors, entire underground levels um, filled with research facilities that collect and analyze data from every person who enters the building. Some say these, these malls are test grounds for larger societal experiments, training us to be compliant, compliant consumers numb to the manipulation happening all around us okay so i can see that being a possibility in some very sporadic instances right maybe like the government or some sort of research agency or even like a, just a pr like a marketing pr firm uh with a lot of money just decided to build a mall to test people's buying habits but i mean all that stuff is i mean it's a lot of that is true a lot of it's just comes down to like neuromarketing to where places are specifically designed to make you shop more like for instance like starbucks Howard Schultz, the founder, owner, CEO of Starbucks, had them create a special ventilation system to pump the smell of the coffee out into the Starbucks stores rather than outside and actually ventilating the area. That way it triggers your senses and when you smell that, you smell coffee, it, you immediately start thinking about Starbucks. And same with um, casinos. You know, casinos have lights. They don't have windows. They don't have clocks. And it's all to kind of help you lose track of time and just spend more money and consume more, consume more, consume more. So uh, I don't think it's, I mean, it's, it's certainly nefarious in its own right, basically manipulating people's minds to buy more stuff. I've been in marketing for over 10 years. I completely understand how that works. Uh, it can be very unethical at times, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't think in this specific case with the shopping malls, it goes deep enough to where it's like like a, like a government research facility uh, in the basement of every shopping mall across America to increase people's spending habits and control their minds to buy more shit. But if that was the case, malls wouldn't be going out of business so rapidly these days with online shopping. 
the deepest point on continental Earth has been identified in East Antarctica under the Denman Glacier. Deep beneath the icy surface of Antarctica, a groundbreaking discovery has been made, shattering our understanding of human history. After decades of speculation and searching, a secret human civilization from the inner Earth has finally been found, hidden away in the frozen continent's territories. This revelation is extraordinary, challenging our knowledge about the origins of humanity. Antarctica is this frozen continent of untold secrets and mysteries, which has long been a siren's call to explorers and scientists. Recent discovery has sparked curiosity about the existence of life and human civilization before it was covered with ice, and also the existence of aliens. What exactly did they find in Antarctica, and what secrets has this ancient civilization been hiding for centuries? Join us in this video as we unveil the mystery of Antarctica. The shocking secret human civilization discovered in Antarctica. For centuries, Antarctica has been shrouded in mystery, its icy surface hiding secrets that have long fascinated scientists and explorers. Recent discoveries have shed new light on the continent's past, hints of mysterious past inhabitants, all uncovered by the latest technology, revealing evidence of a secret human civilization that once existed in the inner Earth. There have also been rumors of secret bases built by the Nazis during the war. These include possible crash sites of unidentified flying objects. Deep beneath the frozen tundra, researchers have uncovered remnants of an ancient culture that predates modern human history. The findings are nothing short of astonishing, with artifacts and structures that hint at an advanced civilization, ancient communities buried under the ice. This groundbreaking discovery is revelation that forces us to re-examine our understanding of the world and our place within it. It is not something to be ignored. What has been happening in Antarctica's icy world? And how have they challenged our understanding? Keep watching to find out. Earth itself is mysterious. It holds so many secrets and has fascinated many researchers explorers and scientists. Leading to the mystery of Antarctica, many have argued connecting it to Earth being hollow. Actually, the supporters of Earth being spherical say that Aristotle observed the curvature of Earth's shadow on the Moon during a lunar eclipse, a phenomenon that only occurs because Earth is spherical. They also point to the principles of gravity, the force that pulls objects towards the center of the Earth, is uniform across the planet's surface, something only possible on a sphere. If Earth were hollow or flat, gravity would behave differently at the edges than it does at the center, leading to strange and observable phenomena that we simply don't experience. Flat Earth supporters argue that what we see with our own eyes is the most reliable evidence of all. To them, the horizon always appears flat, no matter how high one ascends. Okay, so I'm not a flat earther by any means, but I just thought about this. So he said, he said that uh, if it was flat, the gravitational fields would be different along the entire outer rim of the planet, correct? So we have the Aurora Borealis and the Australia Borealis, Australia's Borealis. It's basically like the northern lights of the south, right? But why don't we have, if it, since it's spherical, if we have lights and weird shit up here and lights and weird shit down here, why don't we have any lights and weird shit and anomalies around the equator? You would figure because it would be the same. There wouldn't be specific points only, right, that that happens. Although the world is spinning this way, so these two basically stay on top right with like a, a slight wobble oh, that was interesting to me because if it's a sphere you would think that it would be the same in all points but i don't know i'm driving myself crazy see this is what you guys are doing to me right here i mean it's good that you're making me question stuff i don't think i'll ever be a flat earther but it's nice to kind of have to take a step back and reassess 
all the stuff that I've I've been taught and that I've learned and stuff that I believe. So that's why I like this channel so much. <laughs> you guys keep sending me cool stuff, man. Uh, I love learning about this, uh, all this wild shit and go on this journey together. So I really appreciate it.